Hey everyone, this is Fixing the Optical Problem, where we are trying to not contribute to the optical problem. I'm Zach Kastner, joined as ever by Matthew Smith, otherwise known as That Glasses Guy. How are we doing today, Matt? Oh, That Glasses Guy is doing absolutely wonderful or very problematic in the troublemaker industry-wide. So I have the chops to go along with that, right? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> so Matt, what are we talking about today? So today we're going to kind of go- dive in and give everyone a little bit of an intro, like what our goals are here. We've talked about ourselves before, but today we're going to focus more on what this channel is about. And in the case, and the whole goal here is to figure out and solve what is the optical problem. So we see this day in and day out in the industry. There are obviously huge problems that we encounter as uh, Zach and I both run into this because we're kind of, I don't want to say that we're the best, but we're definitely good enough at what we do that people seek us out when they do have issues, right? As a consumer. I believe that I'm come very in. average, but you are far <laughs> above average, my friend, far above. I am, I am certainly average, good average, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the goal. So we're, just addressing some of these problems that we see day in and day out. So we both have practices. We both get a lot of those people that are running into problems consistently, whether it's a lens problem or a frame problem or a fit problem, or, you know, even on the optical side of it for the professionals in the industry, you know, maybe it's not the consumer at the back end. Maybe it's the optician that just can't find these resources to actually get out there and learn how to become better in these skill sets. You know, what are some resources for that? We definitely have some out there. You know, it's this question of where do you really get the knowledge base from? Or is it just this experience where you learn it by going through it? You know, there is a lot of hands-on stuff that you can't really get just from a piece of paper that tells you how to do it. Um, you know, I've been doing some stuff of that on YouTube myself as well, where you can kind of go through and see the basics of fit, the dynamic and how they interact. And I get cussed at daily because it's a 12 minute video on how to bend a temple. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, it's, I understand it's a 12 minute video on how to bend a temple, but here's why it messes with everything else, right? You can't yep. just, you bend it and then that's it. So it's very important. And it's, you know, you, you made a good point here too, is we're, we're talking for the consumer side of things. There's all these mm-hmm. problems that they can run into, but there's also the problems on the professional side of things that we as professionals run into as well. Um, yep. Whether it's our colleagues, our, our reps, our, uh, our labs that we're working with, even the clients that walk in the door and their expectations. You know, there's a, I'm not going to ever throw the consumer under the bus because they're how I eat. Um, so they're, they're my favorites, but there is quite a bit that goes into this that contributes to this overall problem that we're attempting to, to put some fixes out for, make everyone's life easier. I think that's our biggest goal. Yeah, for sure. We want to make it better for the consumers where they can figure out you know, maybe where they can get that next level of care or where they can find that better value in the dollar, right? Because, uh, you know, the, the economy's in its little situation right now. Every dollar counts. You know, if you're spending whatever you're spending on a frame, you want to maximize every single penny and what you're getting out of it, right? You want to get the best you can for every dollar you can spare on what's sitting on your face all day long. And that's very consumer focused, but it really depends on the professionals in the industry, both the frames that we're using, the skill set that you have to get the optics there and to get the fit on point, and you know our suppliers as well, because I know you've run into this, right? The supply issue in 2020 was a big problem, and we're still seeing effects from that today, where everything Huge was just issue. backed up, and uh, it's still a labor force problem as well, because you lost a lot of really the uh, salty guys in the labs, right? Some of those are just gone now. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, which is, again, that those salty guys and gals in the lab, uh, there's, they were a huge treasure trove of knowledge mm-hmm. and nuggets and experience. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that knowledge does trump experience in many instances, and I'm sure we'll get into that as time goes on on the podcast um, in the channel. But in many instances, that experience will will um be very important for people um you know you can walk into a lab and and talk to someone who's been doing it for 25 years and they've seen 
a hundred thousand different lenses and a hundred thousand different outcomes, which mm-hmm. you can't, you can't discount that experience. Um, we can only discount the experiences that, uh, never end up changing, right? The people who repeat their same six months over and over again. Again, we'll talk about oh, that yeah. later. I'm I'm teasing too much here. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I can't oh, help you're it. You're such a tease, Zach. You're such a tease. That's why I love you. <laughs> I'm not touching that on oh. this channel. We're not going there. Not oh, yet. Fine. Save that for next week. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, that's kind of the idea. We want to make sure everybody is covered, both consumer, opticians, professionals, you know, even the reps on the end of it, because that's a big deal. If we can't interact well with our reps, nobody's getting the proper service on the end because they don't know what we need. And if you can't communicate with them, it's a whole other problem. They have connections at the industry level and the manufacturing side, and that's important to have as well. So it's very multifaceted to get into this problem. We've got so many issues to get into. I I don't want to go too far with it today, but we definitely want to make sure that you're sticking around. So hang out, see what we've got in store, and let's see what we can do about the optical problem as a whole and how we can address it to make it better for everyone on all ends, right? Let's elevate the entire industry and profession. Absolutely. Absolutely. The entire industry needs to be elevated. You know, (laughs) I don't know how often you run into this, but this is just a nice little thought I have. How often do you have someone that walks in and, and calls you doctor or oh. um, calls you an obstetrician or uh, whatever else they come up with, you know, and they even don't even know what their, their ophthalmologist versus their optometrist is. You know, this whole right. industry has so much confusion and confounding. Mm, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is, but there's so many like, <laughs> People are just confused when we talk about optics, when we talk about glasses professionals, optical professionals. Wow, it is a problem. I get called doctor nearly every day. And at this point, you know what? I just might be qualified to be one with how often I'm called it. You're a doctor of glasses. (laughs) That's not how that works. There are no doctors of glasses. I do not have a doctorate. No PhD, MD, OD, DDS. What else can I come up with? I have some crutchety old fingers. <laughs> yeah, right. There are uh, enough calluses and bruises on them to uh, get you something there. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not going there today, sir. <laughs> the algorithm is going to bury us so deep on this one. But oh, if you've stayed, I'm impressed. And thank you, viewer, for staying through <laughs> through that awkward in- interaction that just happened. That was not planned, I promise. Or was it? Oh, it was what it was. And that is what this channel will be. And you will forever have to deal with it and me. Yeah. Yeah, we will. So as far as problems go, we've touched on a couple of them there. What else do we got? What what uh, what really grinds your gears? You know, for me, it's the measuring and the huge jumps in frame quality, right? Because we've talked on this before. You've got frames that can be a $300 frame, and we're going to stick to retail here. And... There's such a huge difference in three dollar or three hundred dollar frames in the way they're built, the way they're manufactured, the way they can hold up, the way they can be adjusted, the materials they're made from, and then how you fit and measure all of that is the one that really drives me absolutely nuts. Because now you've got digital devices for measuring. You can still do analog. Just grab out your little ruler, measure your millimeters. But hey, what if you're not looking straight on? Or what if the device isn't lined up quite right? You know, these are very minute details, even as little as the person is not sitting in the chair right. So yes, you as a consumer sitting down to get fit in your glasses, you sit down in that little rigid chair in front of your optician and you lean back and you bring your eyes up and you look right at them and well, you can tell right here, that ain't gonna be the right measurement. So as a little tidbit for anyone who's on the podcast and not watching this on YouTube, Matt just sat straight up in his chair and knocked <laughs> his head back. So he's looking basically through the bottom portion of his lens. And for those who don't know, primarily consumers and possibly an optician or two out there, that when we measure like that, that's going to put that progressive down at the way, way bottom, which means you're going to have 
no reading. But beyond that, we can have prism errors then and uh, image size disparities due to it. So we got to be careful with these things. You're exactly right, Matt. Measuring is so vitally important. Um, it's just the way it goes. You'll have to forgive me a little bit. I'm so used to the YouTube format that I just feel like I am constantly being watched. I will probably slip up a million times between now and then. <laughs> I will. I'm happy to be your narrator. I will always let you, <laughs> dear consumer, dear uh, podcast listener who decides not to follow us on YouTube, uh, know what he's doing because I am sure it will get interesting <laughs> if I know Matt. Mm -hmm. Possibly. It's very possible. So Matt, here's a question for you. What is the optical problem? And why do these these lovely listeners belong here? The optical is the problem, sir. That's why we're here. See? Yeah, no, it's this, this whole combination of the factors, right? For consumers, it's really hard to find the real professionals in the industry that know what's going on because we've got such a wide range and so many layers of professionals. You know, you've got the ophthalmologist, you've got the optometrist, you've got the optician, who does what, when they do what, why they do what, and what does it even matter what the difference is if you can call them an optician or if they aren't actually an optician. And if they have the certificate on the wall that tells you they're a good optician, does that actually matter? Is it enough or do we not even know? So then on that same aspect for the professionals, did you really gain anything from that certificate, the little paper on the wall, you know, is that your bar or are you still learning and evolving? And how do you want to find and do that, right? So we want to help all of you in a way that really brings everything to a new level. So this is for the consumers to be able to find that quality grade that fits for them, you know, both monetarily and actual fit, right? <laughs> That's the whole key with the glasses. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't think that's talked about enough. You know, there is, there's a, um, a, a, I don't want to call it a dividing line. It's almost like Occam's razor, right? Of, you know, where does the money spent equal value? You know, we can spend, and this isn't any industry, we're just going to happen to be talking about the optical side of this. But the more money you spend, are you getting more for that value? Mm. And again, this is, a, this is something that affects both the consumer and the optician because we have bills that we have to pay too, is that lens that we're spending more money for giving our patient or our consumer the better outcome? Is that client buying you know, the $250 frame or the $350 frame instead of buying the $150 frame? What's the benefit they're getting there? Is it a better style? Does it hold its adjustment better? What's going on? You know, These are all things that we need to be talking about. And there are certainly frame lines and lenses that are more expensive just because they can charge more for it. And you are not necessarily getting more dollar for value. So these are things that we're hoping to navigate. And, and you know, just from our experience and what we see, shed a little light on that we can hopefully help with. Another piece that I'm just going to touch here, which Matt is probably going to reach to the computer and hit me over, but... Neither one of us believe that any manufacturer can do everything right. So there is no such thing as one best lens. There's no such thing as one best frame. I am just going to knock that out. Episode two needs to be said. I'm sick of seeing these posts. What's the best lens? What's the best this? What's the best that? It depends consumer to consumer. You know, it's a yeah. lens with a V stamped in it. <laughs> Get me off this podcast. I'm done. <laughs> Quit. Quit. I'm done. We won't address names, everyone. Uh, but that is a, a very big trigger for many of us that have gone beyond the uh, marketing aspect of the optical world and dived into this whole what goes into a lens, which is an entire episode all its own that we could spend days on. What do you mean, Matt? We've dived beyond marketing and actually started looking at optics. Hmm. Oh. That's a novel concept, isn't it? <laughs> it's unheard of, right? Even even some of our technical papers are basically marketing papers. Technical white papers, for those who don't know, are marketing papers. They are very rarely actually marketing. Mm. And for the opticians out there, which I assume very few of you will, but I am one of these weirdos, read the patent. It tells you everything you actually need to know. It's boring. Get a drink or two. I probably shouldn't be telling people to do that. But or three. have a nice, you know, have a nice orange juice. 
or um something Diet Coke. stronger than oak juice. <laughs> Oh, excuse. There we go. <laughs> Anyways. Re- technical white papers. Now, let's see. We've been going for about 14 minutes here, Matt. I know we wanted to keep this one short. Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? No, I think that's really good on this one. Uh, should uh, hopefully give you guys a really nice wedding of the appetite to see what we're about here and the direction we're going to go with it. And I, I hope you stick with us because it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy start, but I, I really think we're going to bring a lot of value to the table and get a lot accomplished in this channel in the years to come. Actually, you make another phenomenal point, Matt. Matt is a lot more experienced with his YouTube podcasting, all of this goodness that we're trying to bring to you guys. So he's going to be much more polished than I am. Uh, I'm hoping to get up to speed here within the next few episodes and hopefully be delivering a good end product for you. But that's the uh, that's the end goal is that you guys at least enjoy listening to us and hopefully come away with a few little tidbits here and there that can be of benefit. So if there's nothing else, Matt, thank you, everyone. <laughs> and matt as he as we all know if you know that glasses guy is a very confident and well-spoken man just want to throw that out there anyways thank you everyone for joining us again on fixing the optical problem again i'm zach and this was matt that glasses guy you can get in touch with us you know in a lot of the optical forms um or you got matt on his website that glasses guy uh he's also got Instagram. I don't know that he's got a Twitter. Um, possibly a it exists, bit. but please don't find me on there. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna stop talking about Twitter now. You know, it's I don't think it's as big for the optical industry. But LinkedIn, Facebook, his website. Otherwise, I'm Zach Kastner. You can find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook as well. Reach out if you have any questions, and uh, thank you all for joining us. <laughs>